Here's a nice specimen of the male reproductive tract in the horse. So we've got the urinary bladder here with the ureters coming in. We can see now the ductus deferens coming in. We see a very nice ampulla of the ductus deferens here. We can then see the vesicular glands, which can be more readily termed seminal vesicles in the horse because they are vesicular, okay? Whereas in the bovine, they're more glandular-like. Here we see the prostate gland. We have two lobes of the prostate. And then here more caudally, we have the bobo-urethral gland, okay? Here we see the good example of the testis. Remember in the equine, pampiniform plexus is going to come in at the head of the epididymis. We're going to then have the body and the tail of the epididymis. And then we have the ductus deferens. This testis has been opened up. Okay. You can also see on this specimen Nice example of the penis. So we see the urethra coming through here, surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. We see the corpus cavernosum here. We see the urethral process surrounded by the, the fossa glandis. Okay. Then we see right up in here the urethral sinus coming off that fossa glandis which is where the bean occurs, venous megma, that we need to clean out periodically. Okay. We can also see here better the prepuce, prepucial fold, and then the prepucial ring right here, which unfolds as the penis becomes more erect. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look at some segments of the male reproductive system. Here we see the urinary bladder. So we see here the ductus deferens coming in and there's a widening of the ductus deferens here. That's the ampulla of the ductus deferens. On either side of that we see another vesicular structure. These are the vesicular glands also referred to as the seminal vesicles. Okay, those are important to add fructose to the semen so the sperm can have some source of energy. Here we have the prostate glands in the equine. Those are going to be neutralizing the semen somewhat from metabolism. And then here we have the bobo-urethra glands, which are going to help flush out the urethra before the semen comes through. Okay, so we can see the root of the penis here. We have the ischiocavernosus muscle. We have the corpus spongiosus muscle. Lost in this specimen is the retractor penis muscle. So we come down here to the body of the penis. We see the corpus cavernosum surrounded by a connective tissue structure, the tunic albuginea. Here we can see the urethra surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. And we still have corpus spongiosus muscle this far down. So down here we're at the glands of the penis. We have the fossa glandis surrounding the urethral process. And then we're going to have a little cavity up in here known as the urethral sinus. That's where spegma builds up to give us our bean that we need to clean out periodically. Here's one that is opened up so we can see here's the fossa glandis and here's that see the urethral sinus up in here. And that's the urethral process. So here we have a specimen of an equine pelvis. This is a male. We can see the termination of the aorta here. 
giving off the external iliac arteries. So immediately coming off that external iliac is going to be the deep circumflex iliac artery. We may find lymph nodes here and here, which would be the medial and the lateral iliac lymph nodes. Our external iliac continues on down here. It's then going to give off the deep femoral artery. So the deep femoral artery is coming off here. And then it gives off the pudendal epigastric trunk, continuing then as the medial circumflex femoral. That pudendal epigastric trunk is going to give off the caudal epigastric, as well as the external pudendal artery. Okay, Coming back up here, we should be able to find a nerve. I'm not seeing it here. There should be a nerve passing across. Oh, maybe this is it. Passing across the deep circumflex iliac and then going down through the inguinal canal. That's going to be the genital femoral nerve. The genital femoral nerve is going to innervate the cremaster muscle and then it's going to ramify outside the inguinal canal into the skin and the external genitalia. Okay, we see here the deferential artery, which is also a branch off the external iliac. In the mare, it's going to be the uterine artery that comes off here. Here we can see. Let's see, I think this is the testicular vessels joining with the ductus deferens to go through the inguinal canal. So here we see the ductus deferens and the genital fold. The urinary bladder is way up in here. We got a little remnant here of the median ligament of that. Okay. And then of course this is the descending colon becoming the rectum in here. Okay. Something else here on the equine male pelvis I wanted to show you. Here's the obturator nerve. And then here is the obturator artery coursing with it. Obturator nerve, vein and artery. This is important because in the penis of the equine, not only do we have the artery of the penis coming off the internal pudendal, but we have the middle artery of the penis coming from this obturator artery. That's going to give us the middle artery of the penis. That's going to anastomose with the dorsal artery. And then our external pudendal artery is going to give off our cranial artery of the penis, which is also going to anastomose with that dorsal artery. So in the dog and in the bovine, we just have the artery of the penis coming off the internal pudendal. In the horse, we've got that artery, the middle artery of the penis from the obturator artery, and the cranial artery of the penis from the external pudendal artery. Okay, so let's move on over to here. So caudally, we see the ischiocavernosus muscle. We see the bobospongiosis muscle, and overlying that is the retractor penis muscle. Okay. Follow it down here. Here we have a nice testis. Now it's going to be sitting in the body this way, so the tail of the epididymis is towards the tail. The head is where the pampiniform plexus comes in. So the head, the body, and the tail of the epididymis. The testis here. So we have on its surface the visceral vaginal tunic. Over on this side we can see, oh this is very nice, the tail. You can see the epididymal duct. Remember it's one long duct. It's very torturous in here. And then it's going into the ductus deferens. So we have the mesoductus deferens here, we have mesorchium here, they're going to form a common trunk here, which is the mesofuniculus, which then attaches to the parietal vaginal tunic, 
okay and we turn that vaginal tunic out this way we can then see the cremaster muscle coming down and attaching to the outer surface of that very nice okay here we can see the prepucial orifice here and this is the prepucial ring which folds in as the penis is retracted. Okay?